All right, well, you've, if you've heard us discuss it once, you've heard us discuss it a thousand times. There is a global chip shortage and it's pressuring industries uh, from autos to power tools to dishwashers and beyond. How long is it going to last and how far will the impacts reach? Joining us now to discuss is Gaurav Gupta, Vice President at Gartner Research. Uh, Gaurav, thanks for uh, joining the program today to discuss. So you guys uh, recently put out a report just looking at um, how companies can kind of mitigate this risk and, and, and how long these challenges may go on. I'm just curious if you could kind of start with an overview of, of what your thinking is today on the pressures that this chip shortage uh, is putting across business and, and how long the impacts may persist. So at a macroeconomic level, we expect the chip shortage situation to last at least till the first quarter of next year. Um, beginning the second quarter of next year, we expect the inventories to sort of reach back the normal levels. And I say at a macro level because it sort of varies. Uh, there are a number of different types of chips, plus the impact on different industries would be different. And even within the same industry, different companies which have different chip requirements or different supply chain uh, and strategies would be impacted in a different way. This started with the automotive sector, but as you just mentioned, now it has spread out to uh, wired wireless communications, compute sector, consumer electronics, pretty much anyone and everyone who is dependent on semiconductors within the technology industry is impacted. And, and Grav, I guess <laughs> another question I have is, is around, um, is it innovation in the types of chips that is, is being created that's creating this bottleneck? Is the bottleneck around um, demand for chips? I mean, what is kind of the, at the center of, of the issue here? So there are a number of uh, sort of uh, series of events which led to this chip shortage, um, starting with uh, the US-China trade issues, which led to um, a certain companies being put on the entity list like SMIC as well as Huawei. So there was some inventory pileup going on. Then we had the COVID pandemic, which resulted in work and study from home. So there was an unprecedented demand for uh, consumer electronics, laptops, PCs to work from home. The hyperscale guys were building out, plus the 5G revolution came around. So there was an unexpected um, demand for semiconductors. Plus we had a number of isolated events like the Texas winter storm and some fab fires, which sort of created this imbalance between supply and demand. And there are certain chip types where supply is constrained. And these are the more mature technology nodes where there is minimal effort and focus from the foundries to expand capacity. Gaurav, we just talked to uh, Lattice, Lattice Semiconductor CEO. Take a listen to what he said about the shortage. When we talk to most of the people in the industry, I think the consensus that I'm hearing is that the supply chain tightness continues through most of the rest of this year, and that things start to ease probably in the first half of next year. And uh, so I think it's it's a bit of a few more quarters uh, before we start to see some easing in the supply chain. Carl, in that environment, just given uh, it's likely that the shortage could continue into early 2022, are we looking at consumer products shortages outside of autos? I'm talking about phones, laptops, notebooks, you name it, as people go back to school this fall. Yeah, so you have already seen some shortages in gaming consoles as well as it's going to hit other consumer electronics too, right? Um, now the auto sector was hit first because their demand had gone down and they had cut down some chip orders. And now they're trying to get back into the queue and competing with these consumer electronic guys. And the chip shortage has extended beyond just the chips within the semiconductor supply chain. There are other parts of this industry which are highly stressed. For example, testing, packaging, et cetera, which impact some other devices where devices are available, but then these other aspects of the semiconductor supply chain are stressed. So it is going to definitely impact your PCs, laptops, et cetera. Though with the COVID pandemic, there was a sudden increase in demand, and we see that sort of flattening out to some extent. Gaurav, what effect is all of this going to have on prices when all is said and done? How high do you think um, price, how much do you think prices are going to increase as a result of this? So we have already seen a number of times the quotes being increased by foundries, which has resulted in chip prices going up from the chip vendors. Um, the average price increases are anywhere between 10 to 45% for 
for some of the impacted devices. And it's not just the pricing, but the lead times for some of the devices are getting extended to six months to even 12 months in certain cases. All right, Gaurav Gupta, uh, Vice President at Gartner Research. Gaurav, thanks so much uh, for joining the program. To talk through some of the challenges facing the chip sector today and going through at least, it seems, the rest of 2020.